We begin today with the Golden State Warriors getting waxed last night. 24 points in Sacramento. The Warriors are now out of the playoffs basically before they begin. Steph Curry took only 16 shots. Klay Thompson took 10. Missed them all. Steve Kerr says he wants free agent Thompson to come back. Wilbon, where do the Warriors go from here? Down, Tony. Just like all the other great championship teams that have had runs. Going back to the great Celtics. Now, they had more championships. And, and the Magic and Kareem Lakers, mostly Magic Lakers. And then Jordan's Bulls and then the Popovich Spurs. You know, of Duncan and Robinson and Parker and Ginobili. They, they all, they, it ends. It's going to end. No matter how great you are, and it seems to have ended for Golden State. Tony, I, I watched with a little bit of sadness last night because I love going up there. I've, the whole run, this, these nine years, I've been able to sit front row and watch them, and it's been like an honor. I don't want to get too corny. But they, these great players only come along so often, and you don't always get to have them. So they got Steph Curry, and they're still going to have him because Steph Curry's not going anywhere. He's not going to demand his way out. He's not Kyrie Irving. He's not doing that. But you also don't make moves in a vacuum. So even if the Warriors were to make a bunch of great moves, Mike Dunleavy now and his staff having replaced Bob Myers, even if they make the right moves, Oklahoma City's not going away. Minnesota's not going away. Denver is the champs, the reigning champs. They're not going away. The West is loaded. Yeah. The, the Warriors finished, they finished, what, 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 nine games, eight games, over 500, and they were 10th? So... Tony, it, it seems to be over. And I don't even know if I would try with those same guys. God knows if I'm, I, if I'm them. And Steph Curry gave voice to this, and so did Draymond Green, and so did Steve Curry. We want to do this together. They should. I applaud them. You can't tell the history of the NBA without talking a lot about the Warriors and how they did it and how they changed basketball. But, Tony, it's over. Yeah, so I'm going to impart a small bit of wisdom that I learned over 40 years as a sports writer, and that is that coaches always hang on to a player one year too long, yeah. and general managers always want to get rid of a player one year too soon. Yeah. They're not going to make the finals again if their key players are Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. I believe it's your friend Shaq who said, Father Time is undefeated. At this That's time right. next year, Steph Curry will be 37 Draymond Green and Klay Thompson will be 35. I believe that, that it's over. I, I'm hopeful that they do resign Klay Thompson. Of course they should do that. But this one is done. Let's just look, you know, gets micro on this game last night. All mm -hmm. right? And this is an elimination game, a pressure-packed game. Klay Thompson goes 0 for 10. Only the fifth time in his career, 793 games, that he didn't have any points at all. Steph Curry takes 16 shots. That's not enough if you have to get 50. And he had to get 50 last year in order to yeah. beat this team. Draymond yeah. Green cannot stop people underneath. He's not big enough. He had three rebounds the whole night. There's a quote here that is worth reading, even though we're over the bell. It is from Steve Kerr. We were overwhelmed. We were overpowered. Yeah. All the offensive boards, loose balls, they beat us to all that stuff, unquote. So, Mike, that tells you it's done. Meanwhile... In last night's early game, the Lakers advanced to the main draw. They did, but it wasn't easy. A dominant Zion Williamson of the Pelicans had just tied the game at 95 with three and change to go. When he left, he landed awkwardly, left with a left hamstring injury that's going to keep him out indefinitely. The Lakers then pulled away. Tone, you think the Lakers would have won this game if Zion was still out there, if he hadn't gotten injured? So this is a great question. Because this is the essence of sports. If everybody's healthy, who's going to win? Right. I don't know. That's why you actually try to watch the games is who's going to win. But what this, what this speaks to is that's the key moment in the game. Zion Williamson getting hurt. And when you watch it, you don't think anything has happened. I mean, it doesn't no. look like he's injured. So something happens in his body that he feels that we can't see. And he walks off the court. Pulls his jersey up a little bit. He walks into the tunnel. And I keep thinking, well, he's going to come back because I have no idea what this thing is. And he's having a great game. He's having the kind of game that you thought he would have in the pros. And it's only his first playoff game in the NBA. He's got 40 points, a season high. He's got 11 rebounds, right? And this is the kind of game where you say that's why he's the overall number one pick. Because, exactly. Mike, to be fair, people have used the word disappointing 
more often than they've used spectacular in his NBA career to this point. He's having a spectacular game, and then he's gone. He's gone. Tony, he was so great. He was going at LeBron and Anthony Davis right at him, and he put 40 on them. And this is at home after he was so disappointing in the in-season tournament. He wasn't disappointing last night. He came out there as if to say, okay, uh, let, let me show you why there was such a, I was a sensation in the one year at Duke and why people wanted to pick me overall number one. And he did it. And then he was gone. Tony, it reminds me, though, Charles Barkley's talked about this very eloquently, about guys of that size and how 20 and 30 and 40 years ago, they were not expected to run the court in the same ways. When Charles came out, that guys like Zion are and their bodies, you look at all these guys, Tony, they have to weigh less. You know, like Joel Embiid, he's another one. They're, they have the, 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 the size and the, the, the athleticism, what they're expected to do, they wind up injured so often. And I hear Charles's words, and I think, you know what, he's right. And I wonder about Zion. Can he ever be out there to the point where he's going to show us more of that? But getting to the Lakers real quickly, Tony, they survived it. And I am not one of those people who thinks the Lakers are going to get swept or overwhelmed by Denver. I'm not. If LeBron James is the GOAT, and we know he believes he is, then you know what LeBron James' superpower is? He is the best at diagnosing every, every game, every half, every quarter, every possession, and getting the best out of himself and his teammates. He's that great. There is no sweep coming, and I expect the Lakers to take this thing six games or seven games and give Denver a match. Call me crazy, but that's what I expect from the Lakers in that series coming up. Well, I could call you crazy because I think I heard this morning that in the last calendar year, Denver's 8-0 against these Lakers. 8-0. 8-0. Yeah. So that means yep. something. That means something.